But this is uh, China's Evergrande, which is one of the largest real estate companies in China with over $300 billion in debt. Um, the Hong Kong court has ruled that they will liquidate their assets to try to pay back the investors. Now, Evergrande is heavily indebted, right? And one of the questions is, can that liquidation actually solve the problem of you know, investors, banks having to, uh, to basically claw back some of the amounts of money that they invested? Uh, and the question to, or the answer to that question is, I think, very hard because the entire Chinese real estate is actually a giant Ponzi scheme. There's not a lot of money that's in it that's actually for making the buildings or to generate uh, the initial construction. Mo most of the money goes to, in China, they do this thing called a pre-sale campaign, right? So a lot of the money they do use that they get from the last pre-sale campaign will be used to go to the bank to get take out more loans to essentially put up more projects. And the local governments are also involved to, because you know the more land that they lease, the more money that they make. And so they're incentivized to work with the uh, real estate developers to create more projects. Now, the situation today is that after the ruling, uh, the question is whether or not the high court of Hong Kong's ruling will be recognized and agreed upon by the mainland's courts. So there's always been sort of a rule where the, the Hong Kong and China, despite now obviously Hong Kong is a part of China's uh, government control, that they will kind of separate the markets. But if it is the case that the mainland courts decide to adopt the ruling of this Hong Kong decision, uh, which means that they will liquidate their assets. Now, if you don't know what liquidation is, it's basically the company where they get rid of all their assets, try to sell it to pay back for all of the, um, Basically, they have to pay back the various parties, investors, banks, and whatnot, as much as they can. Now, the problem, like I said, is that if the amount of asset that's only being liquidated is only you know, within the Hong Kong part, whatever is in, the, in that part is not going to be as big as that $300 billion, because most of uh, Evergrande's assets are in mainland China. Uh, so the next step, still unsure right now, is how much of that can actually be taken from mainland China. Now, the founder of Evergrande is already in police custody, and he's being questioned, and they're trying to squeeze out every single penny from him. A lot of his own personal wealth that he had taken from Evergrande is already overseas, right? So his family's safe, they're with that money. Uh, it's very hard for them to claw it back after it's you know in the United States. Uh, the Evergrande also filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in the United States as well. So. Now, wh why does this situation matters a lot? I think it comes, you know, Kyle Bass here puts it really well, that this is a, uh, so it's $333 billion in debt for just Evergrande, right? But if you consider both Evergrande and Country Garden, which is uh, another real estate company, they have a whopping $500 billion of debt between them. So this is a representation of a wider problem. Almost every single developer in China is going through troubles of unable to pay back their investors. Um, Evergrande went through seven rounds of restructuring, trying to see that if they can package and kind of zombie up the company together again, but they just couldn't. The reason is Evergrande is just one of hundreds of different companies, large and small, that are doing this, right? They're, they're, there's no real money in the system. All the money that they make from people dumb enough to buy houses to pay for that down payment are used to put up more Ponzi projects. And so this giant system was created in a sense that it's always a bubble. But because the local governments are in it for the interest, there's shadow banking interest, there's the real estate developer interest, and just people blindly being told that they should buy a house. Uh, and then the central government always bails them out by printing more money. It just kind of keeps growing and growing. Now, the, this bubble that we're speaking of, if China is adopting the Hong Kong ruling, it could actually be the beginning of the bursting process. Because again, this is just one of many of the different real estate developers facing the exact same problem. Too much debt, not actually enough money to pay their investors back. So people are looking at a really upheld journey in terms of you know, being the banks in Hong Kong, uh, next step being the banks in China to get a decent chunk of their investment back. Because they were never, let's just put it this way, they were throwing money down a cliff or a bottomless pit. And now they're basically trying to fish out pieces and crumbs from that pit 
that's already been kind of consumed uh, and divided among all these interest parties to, you know, whether that's through corruptions, governmental, um, bribery and things like that, away from the actual kind of pit, right? So now you're trying to fish out something from a bottomless pit, how much of that can you actually get and how much of that actually matters to you? Uh, If there is one supplement you want to get incorporated into your diet, it's a good omega-3 supplement. It's the best all-around defender for your health. It reduces inflammation, cholesterol, improves eyesight, and reduces risk for heart problems, as well as helps with joint pain, among other benefits. Today, I want to introduce you to Puritan's Green Vegetables. Puritan gets their ingredients straight from the high mountains of South Korea, and the omega oils are extracted from purslane and perilla seeds. It's 100% vegan. Now, personally, I've been using Omega for about nine years, close to 10 years now. I've recently switched to Puritan for about a few weeks now. Here's why. We mostly get our Omegas from fish, right? But that's not the best case for everyone, especially there's the aftertaste. It might not be suitable for vegetarians or vegan. Uh, so the most important part, right, we often forget is the actual concentration for Omegas. Periton soft gels have a much higher content for Omega 3, 6, 7, and 9 than many of the brands out there. And some say that they notice there's less hair loss, more energy, lower cholesterol levels, and overall improved health. I think the best part for me is the lack of information or the reduction of information. Other brands also they use this high heat method to extract the oil, which in turn creates a lot of harmful byproducts. Puritan's green vegetable is done using a patented method of supercritical carbon dioxide low temperature extraction. So it preserves the natural properties and maintains high purities. First of its kind, so get it for yourself or as a gift to your loved ones ahead of the holiday season. Use my code DZ2023 and you can receive free shipping globally. Check out my link in the description and comment today. Or the other side of things, if you look at this, right? The, the, the central government has basically decided that no matter what, Evergrande is probably gonna fail. It's however long we can drag out the situation to sort of minimize the impact, but not really. Uh, so they've been trying continuously to drag on this whole Evergrande restructuring situation now that Hong Kong has offered this ruling, which again, isn't actually by choice. It's because foreign investors are pushing this, right? Like everybody's asking for their money back. So this is one of many that's going to come. The next step is Country Garden and many to soon to follow. You're, so you're looking at maybe like one to three years of timeline in which multiple companies, billion dollars in debt, similar sizes to Evergrande, maybe a little bit smaller, or maybe perhaps even bigger, that are looking to basically just collapse. Now, there's another situation that's interesting is because if you take a look at Evergrande, it was founded in the 1990s uh, by Hui Kaiyan, or known as Xu Jiayan. He really, what happened was adopted this, the, the model of pre-sale campaigns from Hong Kong and took that to the mainland without the regulations to back it up. And throughout his sort of until his arrest last year was really about putting together a system in which the government officials and Hui Kaiyan will work simultaneously to build up this big piece of a pie uh, in which everybody profits, right? But when the when, when COVID hit really in 2021, uh, that's when we saw the glimpse of how hollow the real estate sector is in China. But the problem is because everybody has interest in the real estate sector, everyone wants to keep it together. It's a 30% of the Chinese economy. Uh, if you add in all the local financing vehicles, all of the local debts, all of the ties to the different factions and whatnot, it's a much bigger thing to lose if it, uh, if it collapses. So in China since 2016, they have a policy. Let me, let me see if I can find it for you here. Okay, so since 2016, they've adopted this policy. It's called housing is for living and not for speculation. Now this uh, phrase basically means that if you buy a house in China, you should live in it and you shouldn't be selling it and try to make money off the real estate market, right? But in recent um, reports, this is by the Radio Free Asia from today, says that they're removing this language and they're kind of canceling the restrictions for 120 square meter homes and, and so this is a sign that they're saying that, okay, maybe the way for us to generate consumer interest to buy real estate in China again is to kind of incentivize people from actually participating in real estate uh, buying and purchasing and investments. Whereas before it was um, disencouraged to do so. This is never the end of the situation. Evergrande is, uh, I think, continuing going to be a problem 
for at least a year or so until we find out the next step, what's going to happen to its mainland assets. And uh, that's really, really where the big piece of the uh, uh, crumbs, so to speak, will be at. Anyways, today, I uh, hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, leave a like, comment below your thoughts, and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, bye-bye.